Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Kingdoms. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I am having a fantastic day. Um, I spent quite a while, I've spent the last couple hours gathering more wood <laughs> because we were running uh, pretty low. So I've got an entire shulker box here full of dark oak logs and a whole bunch more dark oak logs. And uh, what I want to do today is I want to build some more houses in uh, Nimbonia and kind of just add a few more of these structures and buildings to kind of start filling this area out a little bit. We know that there's going to be a road here that kind of goes up. And uh, I think we'll be able to fit a house in like right about here. This is going to be a road as well. Um, just, I want to start filling some of these spaces with different structures and buildings and stuff like that. So, um, let's maybe start over here, I think. And this one's going to be a little weird because <laughs> we've got, um, essentially like this elevation change here. And that's going to make things a little strange, but I think we can work around it. So, uh, let's see, our road is going to come up to here. And to probably, let, let, let's do this. Let's put this, that should be the, the corner of the road where that shulker box is. That should be where the two roads meet up. So let's go in a little ways, maybe like here. And let's just start kind of putting down some blocks. Maybe about here. And what I'm thinking is we'll have a, a building that goes like this way, right? And then there'll be like a balcony area kind of here. Um, I think that'll look fairly cool. The hard part is going to be getting this up at the, the right level. So maybe we go... Oh man, up oh, there we go. I think we go to about there. And that's, that's about as far as we want to go. We don't want to impede on this house too much. So then we'll kind of turn it. And I think that's probably good. We don't need this to be super, super big. Go here. And then we'll kind of bring it out probably to about there. I think that's good. And then finally, we just bring it up like so. Uh, so this is going to be kind of the 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 size of the house. I suppose the other option would be have this be like a second floor as well. Hmm. I don't know. There's a couple options here. We'll kind of, let's kind of play around with a little bit and just see what we, what we think. We'll bring all the logs up to here for the time being. Let's just kind of get there. And, uh, you know what? Tell me, tell you what, let me get some work done on this house. I'll be back with you with a progress update in just a moment. All right, guys, I am back, and this little house here is done. Um, honestly, it didn't turn out how I originally kind of envisioned it. You know, I, was, I, I had kind of talked, well, I mean, for you guys, it was just moments ago, but I had kind of uh, sort of envisioned this house with like a balcony over here, and that's not really what happened. That's not what uh, how it ended up kind of coming together, but... Sometimes that happens in Minecraft, is you, you kind of start a project or a build with sort of a vision in mind, and then as you kind of build it and it, and it uh, starts to sort of evolve and take shape, sometimes it ends up looking very differently from how you had originally planned. And that's kind of what happened here. And I think, uh, honestly, like, I'm, I'm fairly happy with it. It turned out all right. Um, it's fairly flat on this side. Like, this is not really a good view of it. Um, so when we get the road in and stuff, we'll probably have to add some sort of detail here in this general area. Um, but overall, I think it's fine. Like, it, it, when it comes to building these kingdoms, like, like Nambonia here, or like, um, uh, like Regnum from Season 1, it's not so much about having each structure be incredibly detailed, and super, like, incredible, right? It, it's not about each of these individual houses being an incredible build on their own. It's about the quantity <laughs> of all of these different houses and how they all kind of fit the same theme and sort of blend together. If you go and you look at Regnum and you look, you take a close look and you look at it up close, a lot of those buildings there, a lot of the houses really aren't 
all that impressive by themselves, but it's when you take all of them together, and that's where you get that kind of wow factor. So really, this is about filling up the space and uh, adding more and more of these structures. And obviously, we don't want them all to be the same. We don't want them to be like copy pasted, right? Um, they want to be within the same theme and within the same build style, but with some kind of minor variations between them. So uh, that's sort of what this is. This is just another another house to add to Nembodia. And I think we're going to add a few more of them. Um, if we look back at our original plan, we want to have a structure. This is that hill I was talking about um, a couple episodes ago. We're going to have some sort of like a defensive fortification up here. And I'm going to actually terraform this to make this into like a proper, this whole thing will become one big hill instead of um, several like smaller hills. This whole thing is going to end up coming together. I'll have to fill in this wall here. Uh, put down an actual layer or two of land for us to build on top of. Um, but this is where we're standing. This whole little plateau is going to be uh, some sort of a defensive fortification. And then there will be another one over here on this hill, like right up here. Although this one won't be as impressive as the one over on that hill. Um, but we still have a lot of spaces to fill up and have more houses and stuff like that to build. So I think next, let's see, most of our roads are five wide. I think we'll probably want to say this road is also going to be five wide right here. And we can start kind of putting some structures in along here. Or maybe what I should do is just sort of build this road over. Yeah, that's probably the smart thing to do. It shouldn't take too long, since it's basically all just grass that needs to be uh, turned into the polished diorite. So let me get that done, and then let me start building some houses over here, and I'll be back. Okay, so I did a bit more work. I didn't actually build any more structures, but I did bring the road up. So this road kind of connects over here. And then I brought this road up to about here. I don't know exactly where this structure is going to start, so I'm not going to do any more of this road until we start building this thing. Um, and then I brought this road over as well. So now we've kind of defined our borders for where we're going to start building a little bit better. I think we can probably fit like two structures in right here, kind of in front of the Hall of Patrons, um, sort of just nestled in here and I think that'll be pretty cool um, and it'll kind of exclude the view of this a little bit which I think is good actually I think that's a good thing so you'll still be able to kind of see the windows and stuff over here uh, but if you're looking at it from this angle it'll be kind of hidden a little bit just this this wing of the structure will be so yeah we're gonna go back to building uh, structures here I think Hmm. I kind of like the fact that some of these houses have the spruce logs and some of them have the dark oak. I think we'll probably build over there. We'll do like two houses and I think maybe we'll do one out of dark oak primarily and one out of spruce logs. We'll do like one of each. Um, so let's kind of go and start laying those out a little bit. Just it's a pretty straightforward build style, obviously. We've done it many, many times. I think this is the one that should be spruce. And I think I want to start it kind of over here a little bit. Because that'll give us some room to put something here. Also, I had someone ask me a couple episodes ago. Or maybe it was in the comments on the last one. I don't know. It was within the last couple episodes. Someone asked me in a comment. They said uh, something along the lines of like, it, it, the, the whole area needs more detail. It looks it doesn't look very good right now with all the grass and the stone. You got to add more detail and stuff like that. And I will. Uh, the thing is that that's always like the very last thing I do to a build. How do my doors keep disappearing? Like, <laughs> I swear, I've got doors that are just vanishing. Uh, but yeah, detail when it comes to like the landscaping and like the little details, carts and gardens and crates and different things like that. That's always the final thing that I do on a big build like this, because I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to put in a ton of time detailing everything before you've clearly defined the areas that you're going to be detailing. 
So like, it doesn't make sense for me to, for example, detail um, like this area over here when I don't know yet what you know, where the buildings are going to be and stuff like that. So we will end up doing a lot more like landscaping and detailing and stuff like that. Um, but we need to actually get the buildings and the the, the vast majority of Nimbonia done first. That'll be like the very last thing I do. So anyway, uh, back to this. I think we'll go maybe like a like a four wide front. Ooh, that's going to run into the hall. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Um, let's go like here and then kind of bring it back. Like just. Yeah, like that, I think. And then. We'll do a four wide front there and connect it up like so. So that'll be one house. And then we'll put a smaller one. Let's see, roof, gap, roof. And we can kind of bring this one forward a little, which I think will be good. And then maybe we bring it out like this. So this one will end up being a bit smaller and kind of in front here. But what we're trying to do is create, like, different layers of depth, right? Like, as you're looking at it here, this will be a house. And it'll come out this far. And then back here, there's a different layer of depth. And then over here, there's another layer of depth with the road and then the, the Hall of Patrons, ultimately. So I think, like, this will look pretty good. And then back here, I don't know. We're going to put something back here, but I don't know what yet. Um... But yeah, that should be a pretty good footprint for us to work from. Let me go ahead and get to work on this. I'll be back in a moment. All right, guys, those two structures, the two houses over here are done. And I think they turned out just fine. Pretty similar to everything else we've done in the village. Um, so I think we're good. This little section is basically finished. I mean, obviously, we got to do the landscaping and the detail and stuff like that. But as far as actual structures go, I think that's looking pretty good. Let's fly up way into the air. Yeah, we're starting to f kind of fill in some of these areas. It's starting to kind of come together. Uh, this one's new. No, it's not. Just kidding. This one right over here. This one is new. And then these two over here are looking good. Let's uh, see if we can land up on the tower. There we go. Yeah, it's all starting to kind of come together. So we still need to fill in this space. We got to fill in the space over by the church. Someone, there were a lot of suggestions to put like a little graveyard over here. Uh, we might do that. That could actually be kind of cool and kind of a way to utilize this space but do it in such a way where it's not as, um, as repetition, like there's not as much repetition as the rest of, uh, Nimbonia. Cause I mean, a lot of this is going to be filling in these houses, <laughs> which are, uh, you know, at this point I can basically build these in my sleep. So it might be kind of cool to do something over here with a great, with like a little, a little cemetery. Um, but then we also need to build the defensive structure up on top of this hill. So... Uh, you'd have, like, this defensive structure overlooking the cemetery. And that could be fine. That could be kind of cool, I, I guess. Um, so now, the question is, do we keep building houses or do we work on something else? Hmm. I think probably... Okay, careful. I think the next step is probably going to be to build... Maybe another house in here and a couple here. We also uh, have the idea of doing this whole thing as a town square right here. Although I'm kind of looking at this and maybe I would want this to all be one level. Right now we've kind of got the we've got this kind of coming down. I think maybe we would want to level this town square instead. Hmm. Let me think about that for a minute. 
Okay, so I've had a little bit of a think on this, and I think I do want the town square to basically all be one level, and that's gonna be this level that I'm standing on right now. So we'll end up bringing these bits up by a block, these bits up by a block, and these bits down by a block, and then turning this whole thing into one big town square. Now also, thankfully, a lot of this is already kind of filled in, so not too shabby. Um, what I should probably do, actually, I think it's in here. Yeah, what I'm actually gonna do, I think, is set up my beacon again. Now the question is, where do I wanna put it? Um, <laughs> maybe just like, I don't wanna put it right in the middle of the town square. Let's put it like right here for now, I guess? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just put it right here for now. That's fine. Um, so yeah, uh, once we get the beacon set up, we'll be able to mine this out fairly, uh, quickly. And I think that should be, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm almost of the opinion that it's not quite worth it to set up the beacon for this, but then again, if I'm going to be doing uh, more, like, shaping of the land and stuff like that here in Nembonia, like, we are going to need the beacon again in the future eventually, so I guess we might as well set it up now and, um, you know, call it good. Um, and then we don't have to set it up again. Because unfortunately, remember, a couple episodes ago, we lost our project beacon. So this is actually the, the beacon from my beacon mine. And I just realized I don't think I actually have any materials to light it with. D did I really forget the materials to... Yep, okay. Well, <laughs> dang it. All right, we'll head back to the storage room. Um, I want to, while I'm kind of working this, uh, working on this, I want to talk about the comment of the day. Because I think it's one that we could end up talking about for more than a, more than just a, a, a couple of seconds. I think this could be a, a little bit of a longer one, so um, why not? We'll give it a go. Uh, let's grab some gold ingots, and honestly, I should really keep a stack of iron ingots in my shulker box as well. Let's just boop and boop, and honestly, we should keep a stack of diamonds in there too, just in case. This is like my important stuff shulker box. So, you know, the things that you should kind of always carry on you at all times. Uh, there are logs in there. There should also be a stack of coal in there as well. Okay, good. <laughs> some things. There are some things that are just worth keeping in your ender chest. And then I know that there's like a couple different opinions on like, I know like Exuma, for example, uh, put out a video a while back that was like, the things you should keep in the in your ender chest to always be prepared for any situation and like some of that stuff I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of of the opinion where it's like yeah it's not that important to have you know um this on you but you know there are also things that I find myself using all the time like for example uh wood for torches and stuff like that but anyway let's go ahead and give ourselves haste to and then let's jump into this comment of the day. So this one is from Nicholas Newton, who said, Wells, you often talk about the different lores in each kingdom. Do you create the lore before building, or does the building influence your lore? In other words, uh, which, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? I mean, the lore or the kingdom? <laughs> um... And it's it's one of those things like I've I've spoken um, many times over the course of this series about how I think. Oh, I must have put it in the chest over there. I know we did a comment of the day last episode. Anyway, um, I've spoken many times over the course of this series about how it feels like having lore uh, is very beneficial to staying inspired and kind of getting ideas for builds and stuff like that. Um, but as for which one comes first, it's kind of both. Like, sometimes, you know, uh, l l I'll do, let's do it this way. Let me talk about my, my process for when I decide I want to start a new kingdom, right? Let me, let me just explain it that way. That'll probably be much easier than trying to do this massive 
what comes first, the chicken or the egg sort of talk. So basically, when I'm going to start a new kingdom, I come up with an idea. Like, for example, I want to build a kingdom that uses these blocks or that looks this sort of way, right? Like, uh, like for Nimbonia, I thought, hey, we have prismarine uh, stairs and slabs now. Let's let's do a kingdom that makes use of those prismarine slabs and stairs. And that was kind of how uh, the idea for Nimbonia started, right? And then I kind of played around in creative mode for a while in my testing world, trying to kind of come up with an idea of like, how can we incorporate prismarine slabs and stairs into a build and make it look good, right? Um, like, what's a way, what's a block palette that'll work? What's a build style that'll work? And you want something that looks good, but isn't like overly complicated when you're trying to build a massive kingdom on this scale. Because if it's too complicated, you'll either get really burned out or it'll just never get done, or it'll never get done because you get burned out. <laughs> that's kind of what I've what I've uh, discovered over the years that I've played Mi that I've played Minecraft. And that's not true for everybody. You know, some people are able to uh, to deal with that sort of thing better than others. Personally, for me, I get uh, if I get uh, really burned out, then you know, bad things happen, and I kind of know generally what it takes to like guarantee that I will get burned out on a project because it does happen. It's happened before and I'm sure it will happen uh, many more times in the future. You know, like I basically play Minecraft for hours upon hours every day. Sometimes you get burned out. It is what it is. But anyway, now that I've gotten completely sidetracked. So when I come up with an idea for a kingdom, I say I want to do builds in this style or I want to do builds uh, that use these blocks or or something along those idea those lines, right? Like I come out uh, come up with like a really basic idea, and then from there I start kind of playing around in creative mode, and I decide you know sort of like a general build style and a block palette to make use of that idea that I've come up with, whatever it may be. From there, once I kind of know the build style, once I kind of know the block palette. Then I start thinking about lore and about ideas. And this is all before I've actually recorded, like, the first episode of Building a New Kingdom, for the most part, right? Then I start kind of thinking about, um, like, general ideas for, okay, what kind of lore would fit this kingdom? Or where is it going to be? Or whatever. So, like, for Nambonia, I kind of decided it's going to be a fairly wealthy area. Uh, because, you know, Prismarine just feels very kind of, like, high class to me. It feels like it would be an expensive building material. That's just kind of how it, how it appears to me, at least. So I kind of decided uh, it's going to be a fairly it's going to be a fairly wealthy area, right? It's going to be the houses aren't going to be super run down. Um, Everything is going to be kind of fancy looking and it's going to look fairly wealthy. Everything will be fairly clean and well maintained and stuff like that. And I'm kind of thinking those things while I'm still sort of developing the build style as well. Right. So like I, I had kind of the block palette down for Nimbonia. Like I knew I wanted to use a lot of wood uh, and then the the prismarine and then it's kind of a matter of nailing down like the finer details like making sure that these aren't super ruined looking buildings because I, I i love doing buildings that look really kind of like worn down and and dilapidated um but in this case i wanted to do something that really wasn't that i wanted to do something uh that was a bit more pristine and a, a bit more kind of well maintained um and then as I kind of started building, that's when the other ideas kind of came in. So, like, we ended up using a lot of windows and we decided uh, that part of the lore for Nambonia is that the people that live here are fairly, like, open and social and they, they believe, uh, they don't really believe so much in privacy. They're, like, very, uh, they're, like, very close-knit, almost like family. And that's why they have so many windows in the house. It's kind of indicative of their culture, right? So it's kind of like this this complicated thing where 
the lore influences the kingdom, but the kingdom also sort of influences the lore. It's like a combination of the two. Both, uh, both happen. I, I think up the lore to, to some degree before I start building, and then after I start building, I continue to kind of evolve the lore that we have until I have something that's a bit more kind of nailed down and, and, and you know, maybe uh, it gives us ideas for additional things to build as well. So, uh, so the answer is both. I, 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 not, I, I, uh, the lore comes before the kingdom, but then the lore evolves along with the kingdom as well. Both, both happen. That's, that's basically the very long answer <laughs> to a relatively simple question. Um, but anyway, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and finish out uh, this town square at least as much as I can. I am going to basically make the whole town square out of the same mix of blocks that we're using for our path, which is essentially this polished diorite. And then we mix in stone slabs into it. So we go like maybe, uh, well, there we go. We do like a, a little bit of this action and uh you know stuff like this and then you go in and you mix in the stone slabs to give it a little bit more of like a textured look um because otherwise it's just all one material and it doesn't look all that great and in this texture pack my polished diorite is this like lighter stone brick and it's basically the same color it's like the same shades as the stone slabs. So they go like really well together, in my opinion. You can kind of mix them in like this, and I think it ultimately ends up looking pretty good and, and fairly interesting if you do it properly. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm gonna work on. I think I'm just gonna finish uh, most of this between episodes. Uh, I basically just need to put down all of this diorite and fill this whole thing in with it. Uh, and that's going to be Probably more time consuming than you might think, because it's just a whole lot of block placing. Um, but I will say I'm fairly happy with our progress today. We built three houses and knocked uh, and took care of some of the roads. And then we also kind of figured out uh, some things in relation to this town square as well. So all in all, I'm pretty happy and I'm going to go ahead and call this one for today. My friends, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Links in the description below. So check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.